Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Ask Jason show, where we go live every week answering your questions around business, marketing, or anything else you may want to ask Jason. So if you have any questions, you can comment below. And for those of you who don't know Jason, he is the founder of Jport Media, an online ad agency which helps scale our clients to seven figures and beyond. And he also created the Market Domination Method and teaches it in his private coaching program, the Market Domination Coaching, which if you're interested in joining, you can head over to marketdominationcoaching.com and book a free game plan call. You ready, Jason? I'm ready. Let's do it, Megan. Um, Nailed it. Nailed it again. <laughs> okay, let's see. I feel like we haven't done this in a couple of weeks, so it's good to be back. Yeah, it's been a little bit. All right, so let's see some of our questions. Okay, we have a question from Carly. Carly asks, what are some good metrics to look at or pay attention to for email marketing? Yeah, for email marketing, I would say one thing that used to be the biggest metric that everyone would look at would be the open rate because that's what solves everything. How many people are opening up your emails? The problem is, what a lot of brands and businesses don't realize right now with, is with iOS 15, a lot of changes have happened. So one is you can mask your email. So that's, that's, that's number one. Number two is open rates. The way I don't want to get too techy and geeky about it because like we go down a rabbit hole of kind of how it works. And there's like pretty much a little embedded JPEG that goes into each email that shows that's how they calculate how it opens. But bottom line is, open rates just don't mean as much as they used to right now because of issues like iOS 15 and changes that have happened. So open rates have been, uh, everyone has seen an increase in open rates since iOS 15 came out. And that's due to the fact that, again, geeking out a little bit, just a lot of different changes that went on there. So open rates are kind of inflated is the word I was looking for as I went down the rabbit hole of rambling around it. Inflated is the word I was looking for. So open rates have been inflated. So one of the things you kind of want to look at right now is click-through rates. Do you have clicks in, in your, do you have links inside your email? And what's the click-through rate of people actually clicking through? That means actually more than the open rates right now. And I guess going a little bit further in, into this question is also how are you segmenting your lists? So a lot of people just want to blast their entire list. So for example, if you're an e-com, you may have a list of 2000 people and think, Hey, I'm going to hit all 2000 people. I'm going to show, I'm going to, I'm going to show this email to all 2000 people. And even if you have a newsletter and you're going to blast everyone, the problem with that is that you want to segment, you want to be able to take that list of highly engaged people. And you can break that down. Every platform allows you to segment by them the users so based off what they've done so one of the things i like to look at is anyone who's clicked or in, clicked or opened an email in the last 90 days that tends to be a pretty engaged audience and that's going to be my main letter that's going to be my main source that's what i'm going to flood because the problem is you think that they're showing it to an entire list is a good thing but if the if you have 10 percent of the people who are not not opening up that list and not opening up that email what happens with services like Gmail and whatnot, they then see that as spam and you'll end up in the promotions box. And that's how you, you get deliverability issues. So you don't want deliverability issues. You want to segment. Now, on the flip side, everyone starts segmenting. And I know we're going down a rabbit hole. You asked what metrics to look at and click through is probably the main one I'd look at over open rates because I, I understand the question. I've been asked this a lot recently. But going down the rabbit hole, just so you understand, is people then tend to over segment. Or they try to break it out. Anyone who's opened an email in the last day but hasn't done this. And you can't do that, especially if your list is small. You're just not going to get any deliverability. So keep it a, a little bit broad, but definitely do not hit your list over and over on everything. You want to be able to segment that. And again, I guess it depends on the size of your list. The bigger the list, the more you're going to have to segment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Okay, we have a question from Pascal. Uh, he asks, I have a new online store. I'm using Shopify, but I want to start running ads. What's the best strategy to get started? New Shopify store, want to get started running ads. What's the best strategy? 
I'm going to back this up because this is the biggest mistake people do is they sit there and say, I'm going to open up a store and I'm just going to run, start running ads. Do you know who your target audience is? Have you created your ideal customer list, your avatar? Have you broken that down? Have you done what I call the, the demographics and, and, psycho, and, and psychographics? Do you know like what keeps them up? What problems are you solving? What are the features and benefits of your product? If you know all this, then you can start running ads because you're going to need a compelling copy. And the way to do that is with what we've talked about many times, which is objection audit. What are the reasons why they won't buy your product or service? Make a list of those things and then figure out how to answer those objections. And then what's the benefit once you solve that objection for them to get going? So you kind of want to factor all that in before you run an ad. Because the first thing people do is they say, I'm going to open up my store. I'm going to open up my product service. I'm just going to run an ad and I'm just going to gen generate traffic. I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to get tons of traffic. It doesn't work like that. So I would say if you're new, you just started, spend more time creating that avatar and writing copy on how to sell to those people than you actually do about running about what buttons to press and what should I be running ads to. Once you have all that in the beginning, you definitely want to pick what you think is the best seller. You don't have proof of concept. So right now you kind of have to test. So pick the product, your flagship product, whatever it is, run ads to that product and to that product page, have really good copy, have really good creative, and you'll have really good copy because you've done the steps I just named above. And then start sending ads to that product page. Next thing you want to make sure is you want to make sure this is the most important part when you're starting off is that you start capturing emails. So whether that's running ads for, hey, get 15% off, sign up here to get 15% off, or you have a banner, a pop-up that lands up on your, on your website where they land on it and say, hey, 15% off, sign up to a newsletter. Your goal in the beginning is to capture emails because then you could sell them for free over and over. It's way cheaper than running ads. And in the beginning, you don't probably don't have the budget to now go and spend on acquiring customers left and right. So you need to be a little bit more strategic about it. So the way to be strategic is one, don't waste money. Two, you don't waste money by knowing who your exact audience is. Three, you now know how to sell to that audience. You know how to write copy and you know how to create creative around that, that those audiences needs. And then you want to make sure that you're capturing their emails so they can keep selling to them or you can keep reminding them that your product exists. So big point is knowing your audience. It's funny because it sounds so simple, but everyone tries to figure out for media buying, what's the best strategy, what's the best angle. And they spend so much time learning what buttons to press. When in reality, most of it comes down to copy. You don't even know how, you don't even have to have the right buttons to press. I mean, eventually as you scale, it becomes more important because you just could optimize a little bit better. But in the beginning, people spend more time trying to learn media buying than they do about writing copy or learning how to create an offer. And learning how to create an offer is probably the most important part of your product or service that most people ignore. Good, good, okay. Okay, so from Cass, I want to hire a media buyer in-house and not an agency. Where can I find a really good one? I'm so new to this. I don't know where to begin. So da dangerous question because you're so new to this and you don't know where to begin. I I'm going to have to assume that one, you know how to you know, the criteria to hire a media buyer, right? It, 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 I just get, I just get read questions like this because what the first part of the question is totally fine. I, I, I could, I could handle that first part of the question. It's the second part where you're like, Hey, I'm so new to this. I don't know where to begin. Okay. So then do you have someone in place? I could judge like, what's a really good media buyer. If you don't know what that is and you don't know how to set those expectations or judge that person, then no matter who you hire, it's not going to work. And this is the biggest problem business owners make. They're just like, I'm going to hire and solve this problem, but I don't know enough about that problem to solve. And I'm just hope that I can hand the most important part of my business, which is advertising and marketing over to somebody and let them go and do it. And whether that's a media buyer or an agency, I see this all the time. People hire us as an agency. We like Megan, we, we, you know, we run an agency and they come to us and they sit there and say, Hey, I don't know anything about marketing or this world. That's why I'm hiring you. You're the expert and go with it. Now 
that's great. That's good trust that you have in us. I'm flattered that you have that trust in us. But the problem is you don't know how to hold us accountable. And you don't know the definition of success. And you're relying on me to tell you what the definition of success is. And if I'm telling you what the definition of success is, then there's a problem already, right? The, the, whole, the whole thing is out of balance. And that's where a lot of times people say, oh, I've been burnt before. I've been burnt before. Oh, I went through four agencies and I've been burnt before. I have five media buyers and I've been burnt before. If that's the case, that's a red flag. It tells me more about you than it does about the other agencies because you just don't know how to hold them accountable. So the first part of that question is solid. We'll get to it in a second. It's the second part that I'm trying to I'm trying to get at because I'm not sitting there saying you have to know a lot about it, right? But this is your business. It's the most important part of your business. You have to know something and you have to have, this is what I want to accomplish. This is what success looks like to me. And then you have a conversation with the agency, the media buyer, is this doable? And if the media buyer or agency system says, yes, I believe 100% I could get you that. I agree. Those are the rules of the game. This is the landscape. We're going to go in and play it. Well, then great. If they don't fail, if they fail at it, well, you held them accountable, right? You went in with the strategy. But if you're an ethical media buyer or agency, it's your job to push back and sit there and say, I don't think that I don't think that's a good strategy. And the reason being is the landscape changed. And most business owners have no clue about the current landscape of online advertising. They just want to go in and throw money at it. And they think it, it, it's what it was three years ago where it's I could put a dollar in and get $5 out. The game has completely changed. And they're playing a different game with different rules in, in a world that where those rules just don't exist anymore. So number one is learn how to hold them accountable. And that's how you'll find a good media buyer. So if you haven't found a good media buyer since then, it's because you just don't know how to, you just don't know what you're looking for. So I'd get it trained up or I'd find someone who understands this world and that could help you, right? You pay a consultant or whatever it is. Or you have a friend who knows this and, and you run things by them. You can find them anywhere. I mean, LinkedIn, you could post a job description on LinkedIn, looking for media buyers. You could go into media buying groups, looking for people. There's a ton of Facebook groups with media buyers, just warning and a little bit of caution you go into a facebook group saying you're looking for a media buyer guess what you're gonna get hammered with dms so just be careful but again if you go in and you write a good job description it's on the premise that you know what you're looking for so you go in write a good job description and you qualify people in there no have to have this amount of spend if you haven't had this amount of spend don't waste my time because that's the first thing i'm going to ask you for before we even jump on a call is proof that you've hit that and you could go over and be hard and qualifying and, and go through those people. The other part is wanting to bring a media buyer in-house versus agency. I, I know this is going to come with complete bias here as someone who runs an agency, but I also run a coaching program where I teach people not to hire agencies. So I cover all my angles with this one. So I have a bias. You want to work with an agency? Good. You don't want to work with an agency? Good. I, it's fine. It's fine by me anyways. There's pros and cons, and I'm going to be as... I'm going to try to be as, you know, as, as neutral as possible when giving this. The pro is that you have someone who lives, eats, breathes, sleeps your brand. You can't, you, like that, no agency is ever going to do it. And if an agency tells you, yes, you're not a number to us, like those are the lines. And we mean it, right? You know how we talk to our clients and the relationship we have with our clients are definitely not numbers to us, but we have clients, right? We have multiple clients. We can't live, eat, sleep, breathe. We can't spend all of our time on, on one client. And that comes with a sacrifice. That comes with clients maybe feeling like they're not getting enough attention at times. The next is, I mean, I think that's the biggest pro. The con is with that is that they live in a silo. That they're a media buyer in one silo living in there. They're just looking at your brand with no concept of what's going on across multiple brands. I think the biggest thing an agency brings isn't necessarily talent. I think you can find really good talent from a media buyer that you go hire now that you know how to hire them and where to go because we answered that part of the question. I think you can find really good, really good media buyers. And but so the agency isn't the talent necessarily. It's one, you're not hiring one person, you're getting a team, hopefully, you're getting multiple media buyers, right, on, on that looking at account around the clock, pretty much. Number two is, we don't look at things in a silo. We don't look at it and sit there and say, hey, this is what happened on this client. And now we're going to make rash decisions just based off what happened on this one client, because we're seeing this happen. We have the benefit of going back and looking back and zooming out and looking at things from a macro saying, are, is something like this happening 
on every single client account. Is this something that we see occurring? Is this a theme? Is this a trend? And if it is, well, good. We don't have to overreact. If it's not, well, guess what? Now we have to look in it and dive a bit deeper. But we have the ability to, from spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on this platform and on different platforms of looking at it and just being a little bit more holistic in our approach and understanding. And we just spent so much money. And the benefit is what works for one client, guess what? Now we could test it on you. So every client theoretically becomes a testing and breeding room for the next client or for another client. Because what works on one, we're like, hey, that worked. Maybe we try it on you. Maybe we try it on this client. This didn't work. Let's ignore it on this client. So there's all the different ways that that, that could happen. So I think that's the biggest thing. Now, what's happening we see right now is in the agency world is a lot of people wanting to leave agencies because of the high costs or the high fees or whatever, and they want to go bring people in-house. It's fine. I get the need to do that. And for some businesses, it makes total sense. That's why I say, come join the market domination coaching program. We'll, we'll help you with all that. But I don't think they do the cost risk analysis of it. That's the truth. I think they sit there and say, and I'm just going to make these numbers up. I'm paying an agency $100,000 a year to run our ads. A really good media buyer, guess what? It's going to cost you eighty dollars to $100,000, maybe more if they're really, really good. So let's say it's eighty. You sit there in your head and think, I just saved $20,000 a year. The problem is there's a learning curve that goes to it. So if you've been with an agency for three years, well, guess what? They have, they know the brand. They've been with you a little bit. They like they understand, they understand the culture a little bit more and they could, and they don't, there's no learning curve. The learning curve for most brands when they hire someone and that's training them, that's getting them up to speed on the entire brand. That's having them go through the ad account and looking at everything. There's all that goes into it. That learning curve is probably way more expensive and will cost you way more than the 20,000 that you're probably saving. It will probably cost you closer to 50. And I think I'm being generous. I truly think I'm being generous. I think it's going to end up costing you more than that. So because of that, I think agencies just look at number to number and not factory. I, I, sorry, I think business owners just look at numbers and that's it. And they don't factor all that into it as well. But that being said, as someone who runs an agency, I just gave a lot of reasons why you should hire us. And I hope if you're looking for an agency, you do hire us. But I'm not stupid. I'm, I don't, I'm not a dreamer. I do think that there, for some businesses, it does make sense to bring in a media buyer in-house. It just depends where you're at. And, and I think a lot of business owners think that they're, I think a lot of people are making that switch just based off a numbers game and not really understanding why they should bring a media buyer in-house. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have a question from Victor. Victor asks, what's one e-com tool that we should be paying attention to right now? Tool in e-commerce. I'm not sure what, I wish Victor was, was on. I know we got this one in advance, but I'm not sure what tool, what tool means. Does, is he meaning what's like an app? What's a hack? What's a, what's a, what's a method? What's a platform they should be paying attention to? So. I'm going to, I'm going to ignore it that he's looking for an easy out and uh, he's looking for a tool because tools don't make the marketer. And I'm hoping this isn't a silver bullet question and they're looking for some sort of silver bullet. And I truly hope he means maybe what's a platform that maybe no one's really talking about right now. That being said, I mean, we all know how bullish I still am on Facebook, even though I talk a lot bad about it. I still think it's the best advertising platform out there. Um, I think everyone in e-com is now talking about TikTok. They all now switch and they're all TikTok experts. I will say that if you are going to go on TikTok, I think it's definitely worth it for you to try it, but you need the creative to work. You bring your Facebook creative over to TikTok just won't translate. So you need to make TikTok creative first, make TikTok first, and then those become ads. And then those ads really work well on Facebook. So that's a weird thing, right? So it's Facebook ads don't work well on TikTok, but TikTok ads work well on, on Facebook advertising and Instagram. But okay, here for, for e-commerce, something no one's really talking a lot about and probably a lot of brands sleeping on, and I think they shouldn't, is Pmax, like Google Performance Max. And I think if you're in e-commerce, you should definitely be paying attention to that. It, what it really does is it's accessing pretty much all of Google's inventory and advertising options. And while you're still benefiting from Google's machine learning, which is 
the best in the world. I mean, Facebook talks about machine learning. There's no machine learning better than Google. Uh, we all know how big Google is. So it split tests for you. It finds winners. It, it, it gives you all the different placements. It spits out all the different stuff for you. It's truly, truly amazing. The problem is I wish it worked more in our line of work from a lead gen space. It's not there yet, but from an e-commerce space, it's definitely 100% there. So a tool that you should be focusing on right now, if you're in e-commerce and you really want to get rolling is Google Performance Max. Whether you want to come in the market domination method and we'll talk a lot about it, or you want to hire an agency like ours to go and do it for you. But that's, if you're looking for something like that, that's going to, that's going to produce results for you in e-commerce space. I definitely take a look at that, but you can't go in with a hundred dollar budget. I mean, like that's the next thing I was going to say on that is you kind of have to go in with a little bit of a budget. We're talking maybe like $1,500 to give it a fair test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I think that's all the questions. Cool. Short episode today. Great. Yeah. Short and sweet. Perfect. Well, look, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in, in, in the chat. I'll get through all that and I'll go through the chat later on. This video will also be up on YouTube. It'll also be a podcast episode. If you have any questions, feel free to go in and post it in there. Feel free to send us any questions you have that you want answered on next week's call. But we are back to weekly. I've been away. This has been my fault. This, we started off on a good cadence of doing once a week and then it just completely fell off. But we are back. Happy to be back. Megan, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And until next time, just send us some questions. Bye, everyone. Bye.